Windows Vista famously had a very difficult and complex development. The operating system was delayed several times, and it even required an entire development reset halfway throughout its development. When the final product eventually shipped, it was kind of a mess, for several reasons. This video isn't focusing on Vista though. Instead, we're focusing on that weird OS that Microsoft was developing before it was scrapped. Codenamed Longhorn, the next OS after Windows XP was supposed to release in 2003, and it was supposed to be a relatively minor release. The moment you look at literally any of the builds of Longhorn though, you realize that's not the case. The Longhorn slash Vista project is one that I'm already working on for another video, but in the meantime, I wanted to focus on something else. These so-called pre-reset builds of Vista were never really verified to actually run on any hardware since they never really ended up releasing, and they're often some of the slowest and most buggiest builds of Windows maybe ever. So that got me thinking, can you actually use Windows Longhorn? The obvious answer is yes, you can download pretty much any of these builds and install them and do whatever you want with them. But I wanted to see if you could actually install them on a real system with real drivers and programs and stuff and see how well it would go. Since after all, this channel is basically answers to questions you likely didn't have. Longhorn at its heart is basically Windows XP, so there's a pretty wide range of hardware that you could, in theory, install it on. For now, we're going to start with the Toshiba Satellite A65 that I reviewed back in July. Like I said, this can work on pretty much anything, it's just that I thought I would change it up from the usual Inspiron 1300. And the build that we're going to be focusing on for this video is build 4093.lab06. The build that we're going to be focusing on for this video is build 4093.main, the final build of Longhorn as it was originally supposed to be. Compiled on August 19th, 2004, this is the final build of Longhorn compiled on the old codebase. They had already begun transitioning to a new codebase weeks earlier, and this was the final build before they fully completed that transition. You could do this with pretty much any build of Longhorn, there's lots of different builds from lots of different periods of time that are completely different from each other, but I focused on this build in particular because it's the last build, the most developed build, the slowest, most unstable build, and probably the most representative of Longhorn. Besides, most people when they do anything with Longhorn usually do something with 4074, and I thought I would change it up. If I'm going to be a bit subjective during this, I personally think that the Slate-themed Longhorn setup is much nicer looking than what we actually got in Windows Vista. It doesn't function better though, because depending on what hardware you use, a clean install of Longhorn can take hours to install. It's not lying when it says this process may take an hour to finish. Especially considering this is a pretty weak example of an XP computer since it has an Intel Celeron processor, 448 megs of RAM, a 60 gigabyte molasses slow hard drive, and graphics that came out in the Stone Age. It doesn't help that I'm doing this over a DVD because this ISO can't be put through Rufus. But even the hardware portion of the setup, all run off the hard drive for the most part, took its fair share of time. It's worth mentioning this build does technically have a time bomb, however, it doesn't really work right most of the time, so you can in theory install the build on the current date. But finally, after two hours, I finally got to the desktop, or, well, the wallpaper. On first boot, Explorer just didn't launch. Good. Anyway, here we are. There's no drivers loaded, at least not for the GPU. I'm not really that surprised since this computer was manufactured in August of 2004, and it's not even missing that many drivers anyway. Just some crucial ones like video and audio. Otherwise, this is a pretty boring OS on the surface. There aren't really any programs installed. This is a whole nother can of worms for when I eventually cover Longhorn, but essentially, this build is componentized. This is how things would be in Vista, but right now it doesn't really work right because there's no shortcuts for anything other than Internet Explorer and Outlook Express, which just doesn't even work. What I do have for this computer is the original recovery DVD, which allows you to install all the original drivers and programs, if it actually worked. This needs to be set to compatibility mode for XP to run because this OS has been updated to version 6.0 instead of 5.1, so it's expecting XP, but it isn't that. Anyways, as I was saying, this disk 
allows you to install most of what this system originally had. I figured that would be a good starting point. Unsurprisingly, the OS was absolutely pissing itself over the XP drivers for this as it was expecting a different kind. And I had lots of issues installing just the ATI drivers for the chipset and GPU. But I just tried installing whatever drivers I could. Most of them were already installed, it was just the critical ones I wanted to try. According to the pop-up, these drivers only work because this is the beta version of Longhorn, and the shipping version of Longhorn won't work with these. So, it's a good thing that shipping version doesn't exist, I guess. Fortunately, the system still boot up again after installing all those drivers. Yes, that is a potential issue with drivers on Longhorn. It was a little slower, but not that much different from where it was before. And I could tell that the video drivers worked because this system went into sleep mode. However, the OS didn't really seem to know what to do with that because when I turned the computer on again, it didn't come out of sleep mode. Something I've never seen happen before on this computer. Some of the drivers did actually work, but not all of them, and after I rebooted, even more devices came up, so I just decided that those were the drivers I was going to get. And even the drivers I installed didn't react well at all. Audio, for example, despite being installed, just didn't work. Now since I had this disc, I decided to just install all the programs that I could find on it, because I didn't really know what else to install on it at the moment. This is basically just everything that the system would have come with, and probably a good example of a lot of software that would have been used on this. Some things install just fine, but compared to the amount of garbage that the system has out of the box, not a whole lot installed, unsurprisingly. Most things expected XP or an older version of Windows and didn't know what to do with it. Pretty much none of the Toshiba software worked, which isn't really that surprising. And after about an hour, this is all I got installed. The OS was already pissing itself in real time. One of the things you might have noticed is that all of the icons for the most part have disappeared from all of the programs, and Explorer is slow as balls. Hardly surprising given how unstable Longhorn is. I attempted to just open some programs, but they were taking so long to load that I honestly thought they didn't work. Even things like Microsoft's own Office Suite was having trouble on this system. This is probably because the CPU usage is all over the place. It was pegged at 100% several times. And the RAM usage isn't particularly great either. I figured I'd go ahead and restart the system since a couple of those things needed to be restarted and just to kind of clear up the system and try and make it better. Oh. Or not. Yup. After just a couple programs, it's already bricked itself. It gets really close, but it crashes before it hits the logon screen. So since I'm kind of tired of using this system and it's broken now, let's move on to something else. Like, my actual main laptop that I use every single day. This Latitude E6530 is far from the newest thing, it's about 10 years old, but it's still kind of modern, and Believe it or not, it does have Windows XP drivers. But can it really work on this? Well, there's only one way to find out. Well, first we need to make a couple changes. Disabling UEFI, enabling legacy, and setting the SATA mode from AHCI to ATA. And it boots just fine. It's not fast, but it does get there. It also didn't know what to do with any of the partitions on the drive, which is funny. But it seems to think it will work, so... Oh. Or not. <sighs> so close, yet so far. I tried it again, but just nothing. It was immediately failing. I thought maybe it just didn't want to touch this hard drive, since it seemed like the moment it wanted to do anything, it just kind of didn't know what to do with it. So I decided to boot into Windows 7 setup to go ahead and see what was actually on this hard drive. And bingo, that would do it. I forgot this was a GPT disk. Whoops. So, just a small fix and... It is installing just fine, I can't believe it. It wasn't all positive though, because just like when it was booting up, this was not installing very fast. In fact, it might actually be slower than it was on the Toshiba laptop. 
something 10 years older than the Dell. But it did eventually get there. It needed a bit of encouragement, but it did get there. I'm hardly surprised that this one doesn't have any drivers. I think we can excuse that one. And yet, by sheer luck, we can actually make the screen native res, so I don't have to sit here and use this at 640x480. So yeah, everything is pretty small on this screen, especially considering there's no proper scaling. So, about drivers. Obviously, this system is missing pretty much about everything, and this time, those random unknown devices from the other computer showed up immediately on this system. Well, before I even did anything, the first thing I did was I installed an old version of Reflect, so that I can make a disk image backup of the system, in case something goes wrong, because I didn't want to sit here and wait another three hours for- Oh, nope. Never mind, that didn't work. Uh, is anything gonna work on this? Well, at least we have Hybrid's boot CD. Look at those transfer speeds. This must not be very big. Well, my first thought was Snappy Driver Installer, which immediately crashed whenever it tried to install a driver. So that doesn't work. Obviously, it detects the OS as Windows Vista, so it's attempting to load Vista drivers, but just none of them work. In fact, no even obvious errors, it's just the program closes, which is something I've never seen before. And even the drivers that didn't crash the program didn't actually stick with the system at all. So next I tried the drivers straight from Dell, which unsurprisingly didn't work either. I'm sure you probably saw this coming. Pretty much none of the drivers work on this. I was hoping maybe I would get lucky, but I did not get lucky. So that means that pretty much any use on this system is going to be without any drivers. The system is missing the GPU driver, both network controller drivers, and the sound driver. So it's not really that useful on the surface. But I'm going to continue on anyway. Since the other system broke after I attempted to install anything, I just decided to start installing whatever crap I could find on my computer, all at once, because I didn't know if this was going to boot again. Unsurprisingly, this worked about as well as you could have expected. We're pretty much at the mercy of whatever dependencies are already installed on the system, because updating this is not an option. Attempting to update it broke the UI on the system. I guess at least it boots back up again. So with a pretty out-of-date OS and pretty much no drivers, I guess it's hardly surprising that pretty much nothing works. Even era-appropriate software from the mid-2000s doesn't work. I was kind of hoping that maybe something would work, but this was kind of a pain in the ass. A lot of things didn't even install either since they expected an OS that wasn't Vista. So pretty much any modern thing is off the table. Era-appropriate things, like Office 2003, do install, so there is something, but I was kind of hoping that I would actually be able to get more things running on this. I guess it's hardly surprising that this obviously was not meant for this computer at all. This is a far too new system for this to seriously work. Amazingly, the OS did actually boot again, which really makes you question what the hell happened on the other computer. But as it stands, it's pretty slow, and if it wasn't already clear, this is not a good experience without any drivers on it. I'm not saying I expected this to actually end well, but I wanted to try it anyway, and it does work, so can you do it? Yeah, you can, it's just not a good experience. I mean, hell, it speaks a lot about how good the OS is when it can't even install a DVD drive without needing some form of assistance. And a lot of the times, this computer wouldn't shut down properly either, it would get stuck on the logon screen. I mean, even using it on an era-appropriate system didn't end well, so pretty clear that the ideal system for this is located within a very narrow window of time. Pretty much everything else I tried reacted pretty similarly with drivers. A lot of them just completely bricked the system before I even got a chance to use it. It's almost certainly possible that it's down to this specific build, too. As I said earlier, there are lots of different builds, some that work better than others. 4093 is probably about one of the worst examples I could have picked. Maybe I'll try this on other hardware, and maybe a different build, but I think this video is long enough as is that I think I'm going to leave it there.